Yo, Gentleman's Game back. This is the third installment of the Robert Greene's Art of Seduction series. If you haven't checked out episode 1, The Introduction, or episode 2, The Siren and the Rake, check those out here. Today we're going to be talking about the third and fourth seducers, the ideal lover and the dandy, their strengths and how you can potentially apply it to a real life scenario. So we're going to start first with the ideal lover. The ideal lover is someone who intimately understands whoever it is they're seducing, their deepest desires, and then provides whatever's missing in their life. I'll give you an example of someone who is arguably the greatest seducer throughout all of history, Casanova. You've probably heard his name before. As a historical figure who became so famous for his often complicated and elaborate affairs with women that his name is now synonymous with womanizer, Robert Greene paints this scene in an opera. The year is 1760 and there's a pretty young girl sitting with her husband. She notices a handsome man wearing a stunning outfit. They make eye contact and then after the opera, the man introduces himself. His name was Giovanni Casanova. He kisses her hand and she tells him about a ball she was going to tomorrow night, asking if he'd like to come. He replies, If I might dare hope, madame, that you will dance only with me. The next day, this girl couldn't stop thinking of Casanova. It was like he could read her mind. He knew how to be pleasant, but also just bold enough to arouse her. A few days later, she shows him around her house and points over to her favorite chapel outside her window. Then sure enough, almost like he read her mind, he shows up at the chapel to surprise her the very next day. He literally ended up hiding in the chapel, waiting all day and night for her, and they had a brief affair that would last a few days. Now, she felt guilty, of course, for having an affair at a holy place like a chapel but that only made the affair more exciting. Then a few days later, he suddenly disappeared, as quickly and gracefully as he had come. I'll give you another story about Casanova. A few years later in London, a young attractive lady, Miss Pauline, sees this ad in a local newspaper. A man is looking for a female to rent part of his house. At the time, Miss Pauline was lonely, had little money, and was depressed about her situation. So, she answered the ad. The man posting the ad turned out to be Casanova, and what a gentleman he was. The rent was low, he asked only for companionship. Miss Pauline moved in. They played chess, went riding, discussed literature. He was so well-bred, polite, and generous to her that she she came to depend on their friendship. She felt like she could talk to him for hours. Then one day, Casanova seemed upset yet excited about something. He confessed that he was in love with Pauline. She had a lover in Portugal, so she felt guilty and confused. But a few days later, when she found out Casanova hurt himself falling from his horse, she rushed to him, found him in bed, and fell into his arms, unable to control herself. Robert Greene writes, The two became lovers that night, and remained so for the rest of Miss Pauline's stay in London. Yet, when it came time for her to leave to Portugal, he did not try to stop her. Instead, he comforted her, reasoning that each of them had offered the other the perfect temporary antidote to their loneliness and that they would be friends for life. You see, the reason Casanova was so successful as a seducer was because of his simple method he perfected. He'd meet a girl, then study her, go along with her moods and find out what she was missing in her life, then provide that exact thing. He made himself the ideal lover. The bored wife from the opera needed adventure and romance. She needed someone who would sacrifice time and comfort to get her. Miss Pauline, on the other hand, was missing friendship and serious conversation. She wanted a man of class who was generous and treated her like a lady. In both of these cases, Casanova adapted himself to the woman's ideals, brought her fantasy to life. Eventually, these girls would fall under his spell and in love. You see, the ideal lover is pretty rare to find in the modern world, because it takes a lot of effort. You have to focus intensely on the other person and understand what she's missing, what she's disappointed by. People won't admit these things openly. They'll reveal it through subtle gestures, like the tone of their voice or a look in their eye. If you can appear to be exactly what it is they're missing, you will fit their ideal. To do this, however, takes patience and an attention to detail. Most people are too selfish and preoccupied with thoughts of their own desires to be able to play the role of the ideal lover. So if you're able to pull this off successfully, you'll have insane amounts of opportunity. You'll be like an oasis in the desert of the self-absorbed. Most girls can't resist a guy who seems so attuned to their desires and can bring their fantasies to life. Just like Casanova, you'll develop the reputation of someone who provides pleasure, and your future seductions will be that much easier because of it. Because here's the truth, each of us has an ideal, either what we want to become or what we want another person to be for us. Maybe it goes back to the earliest years of our adolescence, to what we felt was missing in our lives or what others neglected 
neglected to give us, or what we couldn't give to ourselves. Maybe a girl was raised all her life in a super conservative household and longs for danger and excitement. Or maybe she wants danger but she's scared of it, so she wants a man who's comfortable with danger. Her ideal might be buried deep down inside, but rest assured that it's there, waiting to be sparked. If you can come along seemingly possessing that ideal quality she's looking for, she can't help but to fall in love with you. So that is the ideal lover. Moving on to the fourth type of seducer in the art of seduction is the dandy. The dandy, in my opinion, uses a more interesting style of seduction. He's a type of seducer who uses peacocking a lot to draw attention to himself. Dandies kind of play with masculinity and femininity. They'll have their own unique fashion style, for instance, which is always attention grabbing. They're also quite mysterious and elusive. The reason dandies attract people is because most of us feel trapped within the limited roles that the world expects us to play. So we're instantly attracted to those who are more fluid, more ambiguous than we are, those who create their own persona. Dandies excite us because they can't be categorized and hint at a freedom that we wish we had. Here's a story of a famous dandy that Green uses. In 1913, an 18-year-old Rudolfi Guglielmi emigrated from Italy to the US. He wasn't particularly skilled apart from his good looks and his dancing acumen. He soon found work in the dance halls as a taxi dancer, basically someone who would expertly twirl girls around the dance floor chatting and flirting, and then girls would typically leave a small tip for them. Rudolfi made a name for himself as one of the best taxi dancers, so graceful, poised, and pretty. He quickly learned what pleased women, how to mirror them in subtle ways, how to put them at ease, but not too much. He began to pay attention to his clothes, creating his own unique dapper style, having a corset under his shirt to look more trim, and sporting a wristwatch, something that was considered effeminate at the time. Eventually, he moved to LA to pursue his dreams in Hollywood. After starring in some low-budget picture, he eventually landed a somewhat larger role in the 1919 film Eyes of Youth. He immediately caught women's attention with how different of a seducer he was. His movements graceful and almost delicate. His skin so smooth and his face so pretty that, as Robert puts it, when he swooped down on his victim and drowned her protest with a kiss, he seemed more thrilling than sinister. Valentino went on to star in other films like The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and The Sheik, becoming an overnight sex symbol through showing his graceful dancing skills on screen. Women all over America fell in love with the way he strangely blended both feminine and masculine traits. They were thrilled by the ambiguity of a man who shared many of their own traits while remaining a man at his core. You see, Valentino would play around with his style and dress to the point where it was a little bit flamboyant, but still portrayed a masculine image. The way he would seduce women was attentive and slow, setting a rhythm instead of hurrying. But when it was time to take action and be bold, he never missed a beat, overwhelming her and giving her no chance. You see, the dandy lures women in by giving exactly what she wants, a familiar pleasing, graceful presence. He mirrors female psychology, giving extra attention to his appearance and developing a sensitivity to detail, even being a bit narcissistic. As Robert writes, women can be narcissists, in love with the charms of their own sex. By showing them feminine charm, a man can mesmerize and disarm them, leaving them vulnerable to a bold, masculine move. I think a good example of a dandy would be someone like Russell Brand, or a K-pop singer. Stylish, neat, and carries himself with confidence, but also with a bit of effeminate flair, like a peacock spreading its feathers. So if you're someone who's heterosexual but have your own kind of unique style, almost a bit effeminate and flamboyant while still staying masculine overall, the dandy might be your style of seduction. If so, I suggest to maximize on those qualities of being clean and neat trim and to create your own unique visual style. But don't be too obvious with it. Dandies are subtle and never try hard for attention. Attention just naturally comes to them. So those are the third and fourth types of seducers. The ideal lover and the dandy. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment with your thoughts on what was discussed. And as always, make sure to check out my Instagram and my free 5-page PDF on the fundamentals of attraction that you can find in the description box below. Next episode, we're going to be talking about the type of seducer that I personally resonate with, the natural, as well as the coquette. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and as always, peace.